Chapter 2 Introducing Testu, his parents and the Shining House Testu's hair was fair and curly at the ends. Imagine sunbeams ending in little curls when they touch the ground. Testu had wide blue eyes and fresh rosy cheeks. People kissed him a lot. Grown up, particularly those with wide black nostrils, wrinkles on their foreheads and hair growing out of their ears, are always kissing rosy-cheeked little boys. They say the little boys like it, but that is another of their ready-made ideas. Really, of course, it's the grown-ups who like it. And the little rosy-cheeked boys are very kind indeed to give them so much pleasure. Everyone who saw Testu exclaimed, Oh, what a beautiful little boy! But this did not make Testu conceited. Beauty seemed to him a perfectly natural quality. He was always surprised that every man, woman and child should not be as beautiful as were his parents and himself. For we must say at once that both Tistu's parents were very beautiful indeed, and it was from looking at them that Tistu had fallen into the way of thinking that it was quite normal to be beautiful, while ugliness seemed to him both exceptional and unjust. Tistu's father, who was called Mr. Father, had black hair brushed carefully smooth with brillantine, he was very tall and very well dressed. He never had so much as a speck of dust on the collar of his coat, and he smelled of eau de cologne. Mrs. Mother was slender and had fair hair. Her cheeks were as soft as rose petals, and when she came out of her room there was a scent of flowers all around her. Tis too was really a very lucky boy, for not only had he Mr. Father and Mrs. Mother all to himself, but he had the advantages of their enormous fortune. For Mrs. Father and Mrs. Mother, as you will already have guessed, were very rich indeed. They lived in a magnificent house several stories high, with a flight of steps leading up to a veranda, a big staircase, a little staircase, high windows arranged in rows of nine, and turrets with pointed heads on them, while the whole thing was surrounded by a splendid garden. Every room in the house had such thick, soft carpets that you walked on them in perfect silence. They were splendid for playing hide-and-seek and for running on without slippers, though this was forbidden. Mrs. Mother would say, "'Tis too, put on your slippers, you'll catch cold." But because of the thick carpets, "'Tis too, never caught. There were also splendid, highly polished brass banisters to the big staircase. They were like a huge capital S with several humps. Starting somewhere at the top of the house, they seemed to plunge downward like golden lightning to the bearskin rug on the ground floor. Whenever he was alone, Tistu climbed onto the banisters and hurled himself giddily downward. The banisters were his private toboggan, his flying carpet, his magic railway. And every morning Carolus, the manservant, polished them frantically till they shone. For Mrs. Mr. Father and Mrs. Mother liked everything to shine brightly, and everyone took a great deal of trouble to please them. The hairdresser, thanks to the brillantine we have already mentioned, succeeded in making Mr. Father's hair look like a sort of helmet, which reflected the light of at eight different points, and everyone admired it very much. 
while Mr. Father's boots were so beautifully brushed and polished that when he walked they seemed positively to throw out sparks before him. Mrs. Mother's nails, which were polished every day, shone like little windows in the rising sun. Round Mrs. Mother's neck, at her ears, her wrist and up on her fingers gleamed necklaces, earrings, bracelets and rings made of precious stones. When she went out in the evening to a theatre or a ball, all the stars of the night seemed dim beside her. Carolus the manservant used a special powder of his own invention to make the banisters into the masterpiece they were. But he also used this special powder on the doorknobs, the silver candlesticks, the chandeliers, the salt cellars, the sugar bowls and the buckles of belts. As for the nine cars in the garage, one had really almost to put on dark glasses to look at them. When they all went out together and drove through the streets, people stopped on the sidewalk. It was as if the Hall of Mirrors had gone out for a walk. It's like Versailles, said the more knowledgeable. The absent-minded took off their heads, thinking it was a funeral. Smart young women took advantage of this shiny paintwork to powder their noses. In the stables were nine horses, each more beautiful than the other. On Sundays, when there were visitors, the nine horses were brought out into the garden to decorate the landscape. The big black stood under the magnolia with his wife, beautiful mare, the pony, whose name was Gymnast, stood near the summer house. In front of the house, on the green lawn, the six strawberry roans stood in line. They were thoroughbred, bred by Mr. Father, who was proud of them. The stable boys, dressed in silks like jockeys, ran brush in hand, from one horse to another, because the horse's coats had to shine too, particularly on Sundays. My horses must shine like jewels, said Mr. Father to his stable boys. Fastidious though he was, he was a kind man, so all obeyed him to the best of their ability, and the stable boys groomed the roan horses with such attention to the lie of each hair that their hindquarters looked like enormous rubies of exquisite cut, while their manes and tails were braided with silver paper. This too adored the horses. At night he often dreamed that he was sleeping among them on the pale straw of the stables. By day he was always going to visit them. Whenever he ate a piece of chocolate, he put the silver paper carefully aside and gave it to the stable boy in charge of his pony, Gymnast. For he loved Gymnast more than all the other horses. And this was quite natural, because Tis too and the pony were just about the same height. And so, living in the shining house with his scintillating father and his mother, who was a nosegay herself, among beautiful trees, exquisite cars and lovely horses, Tis too was a very happy little boy.